and welcome back. We are live at the AWS Summit in Sydney in the middle of the Expo Hall. My name's Nikki, I'm a Senior Technical Evangelist at AWS, and today we're going to be talking about AWS Step Functions. But before we do, introductions. Uh, I'm Dean Samuels, the Solutions Architect Manager for Hong Kong, and we have... I'm Andy Katz, I'm a Product Manager with AWS Step Functions. Awesome, so tell me a little bit about AWS Step Functions. Um, for those that are not familiar with it, what is it? Yeah, so let me show you a few things. Step Functions is a uh, workflow service from AWS. We'll put this on the screen, hopefully people can see this. All right, let's see. All Perfect. right, we got it. And it's really designed, we just talk about it as, as building distributed applications as visual workflows. Other people talk about this as orchestration, um, coordination, um, but it's really a way of connecting services that are on a network and keep them in a coherent fashion. So for example, kinds of things you want to do in a workflow environment, you're on the cloud, so you want to be able to scale out. Totally. So that's important. Uh, but you want to keep track of state, because a lot of things you do are stateless. Like if you have Lambda functions, they're stateless. They wake up, they do work, they go back to sleep. How do you keep track of information from one Lambda function to the next? Um, you also want an easy way to deal with errors and timeouts. Things do go wrong. So what happens when that function fails? Can you retry it? Or if it takes too long to get an answer, if it's calling an API, say have a legacy system, and it times out, what happens? You want to retry it, or you want to go totally somewhere else in your workflow? Very important things. Ideally, you want this to be easy, not hard. That's the whole point. So Step Functions makes this easier. I love easy things. And it's you my want, favorite kind of thing. And you want to be able to find out what's going on quickly, so you want it auditable. So you say, what happened, and we'll get you a complete audit trail. Okay. So we say, what does a workflow look like? We say, well, an example might be an image processing workflow. Mm -hmm. So I upload a photograph to S3, I want to make a thumbnail of it, and maybe I want to send it to Amazon recognition and say, what's in this picture, so I can build a database of, of pictures that I have on my website. And so there's three things I do. I make that thumbnail, I identify the features in the photo, and I store that metadata in somewhere like, say, Dynamo. Now you can build this faster on AWS by using managed services, things like we talked about S3 and recognition, but Lambda. also Dynamo, Lambda, and, uh, and send messages to people with simple notification service when these are done. But this is a distributed environment. Everything's on a network. Mm -hmm. So how do you put things together in a network? That's where Step Functions comes in. So when we take a look at that workflow, it's a flow chart. We say, picture comes in, extract the metadata. If it's the right kind of picture, we can process it. If it's the wrong kind of picture, we say can we can't process rules, it. you set rules like if this, then that? Absolutely. So what we see in the workflow on the right is the first step is we have a task. Tasks do work. They call things like Lambda to compute. In this case, we ask, what's the metadata? Then we can do choices and say, well, if it's the right kind of image, I'll process it. I'll go down the left branch. If it's the wrong kind of image, I won't. And I'll send a notification that I got the wrong kind of image, and we'll send it off on SNS. Um, we can then store that metadata. Just like code. Just like code. Um, but we can visualize it. Yeah. So uh, what are some of the ways that customers are using Step Functions to build serverless apps? So customers use this for a lot of different things. Uh, common use case, processing data. Uh, Home24 is an example where they integrate a lot of information uh, from their online advertising from different providers and they want to standardize the analytics. So they actually run a small data lake using Lambda and S3 and Step Functions where they ingest from many different sources, process the data into a standard format that they can consume for their analytics. Right. And they went from a, a SaaS solution that was costing about $5,000 a month to a solution that cost them about $50 a month using yeah. Step Functions and Lambda and S3. Awesome. And, and uh, so, so sorry, Andy, in the, in the workflow, you mentioned about various components of AWS services. Could yeah. you have uh, you know, third-party services? Could you have maybe human beings in the, uh, in the process? Great you question. might have some gatekeeping that you need to do. Yes, yeah, yeah. so you, can, you, can um, you can set up all these things. So Lambda is usually your, your common bridge between third-party services. Mm -hmm. But Step Functions also has the ability to set up human approval steps, mm -hmm. human in the loop kind of activities. Um, as well as um, things like if you're dealing with um, IT infrastructure, mm -hmm. lots of ways to automate IT tasks. So uh, even though Step Functions is a service that is really great at tremendous scale, it's mm. also a service that's easy enough to use as a substitute for a shell script. Right. And so when you think about a shell script that you wrote and you wanted to keep for a week mm. and ended up living for a year, maybe you should turn that into a Step function state machine instead and let that be your workflow engine. And so Clauticity is a, an example of customers doing that. They use that to automate patch management on their EC2 fleets. Right. Um, you can also, when you talk about older services, mm -hmm. customers like Yelp use it to modernize legacy services, okay. monolithic services, making them more modern and turning them into microservice-based architectures. Right, right, okay. And, and so, uh, obviously, you know, Step Functions has already come a long way in a short, uh, short lifespan, yeah. and we've spoken about some use cases. What about looking towards the future? You know, uh, can you talk about maybe some of the new features that we've recently released, and yeah. where do you see it heading? Good sure. question. I do the podcast show, and they've definitely been hard at work releasing a lot of updates. <laughs> let's hear them. Absolutely. So let's jump to, the, to, to what's new. So 
We launched earlier this year a local runner. So now only can you run step functions in the cloud to speed up development. We have a local runner that you can run on your desktop. It's fully API wow. compatible. It's available as a Docker image. It's available as a jar file that you can download from S3. You can install that, and that means you can build and deploy your state machines on your, on your laptop while you're in an airplane, and then bring them to AWS when you get on the ground. Another useful feature we just launched is tag-based policies for IAM. This means that you can restrict access to step functions um, based, based on, on tags, tags that you assign That's to the cool. workflow. Mm -hmm. That's really useful. It makes using IAM a whole lot easier, and it lets you have really, really tight security around not just who runs the workflow, but in the workflow itself, what resources it can use. Mm -hmm. So you get very fine-grained security with step functions. And finally, the most interesting recent release, I think, is service integrations. Right. So when we launched Step Functions, we were integrated with Lambda. So it's very useful for orchestrating Lambda functions to do various tasks. But customers ask us for more. It's moved beyond now. It's moved beyond. So now Step Functions directly talks to eight different services. We talk, in addition to Lambda, compute services like ECS and Fargate. We talk to uh, AWS Batch. We can, do we can do machine learning training jobs on SageMaker. We can run ETL jobs on AWS Glue. We can read, write, and update tables in Dynamo. And we put messages on SQS and SNS. Yep. So this lets you do a lot more, a lot faster with your workflows. So when we take a look at that older workflow we talked about earlier, uh, image yeah. processing, now we're talking about, well, Lambda's extracting that metadata, and then we're storing the metadata in Dynamo with direct call to Dynamo. And then um, if the image is the wrong kind, we're putting a message directly on SNS and sending out to the person who, right. who needs to hear that message. And so Andy, would you mind taking a question from yeah. one of our audience sure. members? And uh, remind that please uh, send any questions you might have uh, into the chat and our moderators will uh, try and accommodate or, or, or we'll try and announce it uh, up here. So we've got a uh, audience member who wants to know what's the latency uh. between individual steps in a step function? So the latency between individual steps and a step function varies, but it's typically on the order of 100 to 150 milliseconds between mm -hmm. steps, um, plus whatever it's latency fast. is induced by the service you're using. So if your mm -hmm. Lambda computes for a minute, that's going to be the dominant wait right. time. But right. typically, latency between steps is on the order of 150 milliseconds. We have another question from Mr. Coolwit. Will we be able to nest step functions anytime soon? Nesting is an area that a lot of customers have asked us for, mm -hmm. and when customers ask for something, we typically take action. Yeah. <laughs> Can't speak directly to it, but maybe. <laughs> um, so service integrations you were talking about, they sound like a really great way to build uh, serverless workflows. How are customers using service integrations today? So let's take a look at some example workflows. Let me get out of this for the moment. And let's bring up the console. So if we take a look at the Step Functions console, um, we're going to okay. start in an area, if you go to Step Functions, State Machines, Create State Machine, you have choices. You can author with code snippets. You can build with templates. What I recommend people start with is sample projects. Okay. Sample projects are available to you as CloudFormation templates that you can get one-click deployment of a complete working workflow that you can expect, Sweet. experiment with, and learn from. So there's two we'll look at today. First one we'll look at is the task timer workflow, which cool. is a really useful situation where you want to schedule something to happen in the future, up to a year in the future. Oh, and so this is a way okay. that we'll say, hey, I want this to happen sometime from now, mm. and then it'll like happen. Like a reoccurring or a one-time task? This, in this case, each workflow was a one-time task. Okay. Right. Um, but you can schedule up to a million concurrent executions, so you can have a lot of things waiting to happen mm. in the totally. future. And like on my birthday, send me an email. Come on your birthday, <laughs> on your anniversary, on your mother's birthday, on your father's birthday, and um, you know maybe when the dog has to go to the vet. So audience out there, make sure you set up your step functions to send Nikki an email on her birthday. <laughs> they don't know what my birthday is. They can't do that. And so here's how, it, how you do it. So the workflow looks like this on the right. You see that uh, we start and we say, hey, wait for the time. And when the time is done, do the task. So this is a wait state and a task state. The code here you see on the... And on this the can literally just sit for like 354 days as an example. Exactly. So if you look here in the code where we say wait for the timestamp, in this case we're setting the time based on seconds. Wow, okay. And it's set as input to the workflow, so it's parameterized. So I say, hey, this time around, let's wait 10 seconds. Maybe the next time I want to wait 59,000 seconds, which will be you know, a few weeks. Mm. Um, oh, but you could continuously call this workflow with a different parameter of With seconds. a different parameter and set different schedules for different events that you want Got to it. happen. And so this is a good way to schedule things in the future, like, hey, if I need to do periodic maintenance, I can set it up to happen uh, every, you know, every three weeks and, and build a schedule where every three weeks another workflow kicks off um, staggered to do things like patch my servers. Right. So we take a look at running one of these things really quick. Uh, we got a yep. question. Sure thing. Troll Polis asked, do step functions handle joins? Uh, yes. So if you have a parallel state in step functions, uh, each branch does something different. The output of the branches are joined when you exit that parallel state. Um, 
it's, it doesn't um, make decisions about how they're merged. It lets you figure that out afterwards with the Lambda function to pr process and, and consolidate further. Got it. So we take okay, so now you're going into one of your workflows. So work this is an example flows. of these workflows. So here's an example of one that run. It color codes so that when the steps are completed, they're turned green. Let's run one now really quick. And so if we go in here and start a new execution, you can see as input, we gave a, an SNS topic that we want to send the message to. We have a message. Maybe we'll change the message to hello, Sydney. Hello, Sydney and hello, Twitch. Sydney. And Twitch. Hello to everyone on Twitch. Yep. And we'll start that execution. And what you'll see now is we have a running workflow, and it's blue because we're in the wait state, and we're going to wait for 10 seconds. When 10 okay. seconds are up, it's going to go to the next step, which is a task state, which is going to send that message out on SNS. Um, and it's going to come to my email, but my email is shut off, so we're not going to see that. Now you can see we've completed the timestamp. I'll refresh okay, so the console Okay, so now did it really send quick. an SNS message? Yeah. Now step functions console updates every five seconds, so the message actually went out on Lambda almost instantaneously, mm -hmm. but we didn't see it until I refreshed the console. And where did it go? It went to my email account. Your email, okay. I'm not going to, I'm not going to open my email today, but it's there. Now second example we could try. Post is if we go and say create a state machine, we go to sample projects, we can also manage jobs in AWS Batch. Mm. In this case, we're going to submit a job to batch. Step functions actually wait for that batch job to complete. And that job could take hours, days even. Yeah. And step functions will stay in that one state, not paying for it until it's complete, and then transition and send a message in SNS that it succeeded. Or if you got an error, notify failure. This is a way that you can manage and monitor long running jobs um, very easily. So if we take a look at running one of these, um, we'll go to batch really quick. And in this case, we'll start an execution. We don't need to put any uh, particular message in this case because it's pre-configured. But you'll see we start, we've submitted the batch job. Kay. It's blue. Batch is going to run that job. As soon as it's done, it's going to, in this case, it just echoes how Notify hello world. success or failure. It will notify success or failure. And this is a simple way to manage long-running jobs. Right. Really cool. Now, if you want to try these beyond the sample projects, I can give you a couple of quick resources that will be helpful I'm going to drop these links in the chat for you that he's pulling up right now. I'll bring up here. So to get started really easily, in addition to trying the sample projects, you can also do a step-by-step, hands-on, 10-minute tutorial and build a workflow using a Lambda function. And that's available at the URL we show here, uh, shortened URL. And if you just want to read up more, see more uh, webinars, blogs, reference architectures, um, and videos, um, a second link here will get you all the resources we have available for AWS Step Functions. Super cool. Awesome. Definitely check out that 10-minute uh, tutorial. Yep. That one looks really neat. Excellent. Thank you so much for telling Appreciate us Andy. about yep. AWS Step Functions. You're very welcome. Thank you, everybody. I'm definitely intrigued to start playing with it more. Mm -hmm. um, we will be back again with more content. We'll see you all very shortly. Thanks again, guys. Awesome. Bye, Thank everyone. you. The next one. Bye.